my name's John Bed, and I'm a chef from the UK. I've come all the way over here to Bologna, Italy to seek out and improve on my own recipe for my favourite dish in the entire world, ragu, or as most people know it, bolognese. Okay, so this is the reason why I'm here. So I've come all the way to Bologna just so I can eat this one dish. I've eaten a lot of things since I've been out here. I mean, I've had um, I've had, Stella, I've had Parma ham, I've had Parmesan, I've had gelatos, I've had sorbets, I've had all of these things. But the one reason why I'm here, this guy. So, this is bolognese. So, the real word for it is ragu. Now, it's not like anything like you or I know it in, you know, in Britain or, the, or uh, the USA. The first thing you notice about it, have another look. The first thing you can notice about it is that it looks a lot different than ours in the way that it doesn't just seem to be a, uh, it's, it's not just a tomato sauce at all in any way, shape or form. It tastes, or at least I hope it's going to taste, of meat and of tomatoes and of the sofrito as well. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the sofrito is simply carrot, onion, celery. So it's the same thing they have in France, they call it a mirepoix. In England, we just call it onion, carrot, and celery. It's just, it's pretty much just the basis for the dish. So, I've basically been waiting all of my life to try this dish. I have traveled all the way over here to Bologna because I'm hungry and I want to eat this. I have been thinking about it and studying it and looking at it for about 20 years. And now I finally get the chance to try it. So let's give it a go. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay, this tastes nothing like what you would expect. One thing is, well, there's zero garlic in it, which is very, 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 very important. I never put garlic into a ragu, but you can really taste just a whole amalgamation of all the flavors that are going on here. Like I say, it doesn't just taste like a tomato. It doesn't just taste like meat. All of these things going on at the same time, and there seems to be like a, a kind of oil that's sort of coating all of the pasta as well. I mean, not in a bad way, in a good way. It's like a bright red oil that's um, from where it's all been uh, cooked for so long. It's all been concentrated down, and it's had hours and hours and hours just to all bind together those flavours. And they've simply just got some um, some tagliatelle, some. It's, uh, you'll notice as well that it's bright yellow. That's because uh, up in Bologna as well they use uh, fresh, egg, fresh egg pasta rather than usual like uh, Durham wheat pasta that uh, we normally use. <laughs> it's, I'm so happy I'm eating this. It's, um, this is exactly what I've been waiting for for the majority of my life. Mm. Beautiful. So what I plan on doing is trying this dish in as many, many places as possible. I've only got about 12 hours or so to do it. So I figure I can eat a good four regulars at that time. So until then, I'm gonna carry on eating this and I'll see you at the next regular. Okay, so uh, we're in for round two now. Uh, well, it's a bit of a lie. I got, I got a confession for you. I've cheated on you guys. I went to another place and it was even louder than this one. You wouldn't be able to hear a thing. I'll tell you about it later. Uh, so, oh, the other thing is, uh, yes, it has been raining outside, which is why I look like a wet lettuce. So, have another look now at the next one. This one is that the, the pasta seems to be thinner than the uh, than the uh, than the other tagliatelle that I've had before. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just uh, just different. Also looks a touch thicker as well. Oh, 
All right. I know I said it's thinner and thicker. What I meant was that it's thinner in width and thicker in depth. All right? Okay. I'm thinking maybe perhaps in here they actually make their own plastic. This could be good. Let's give it a try. This one has a much beefier taste. And also, uh, yeah. it feels like maybe perhaps they've cooked it with a with a stock of some kind as well. It's um, I get more meat than anything else, um, which is strange because it should be actually. Well, I'm not going to sit here and tell the how to make this dish. Get myself shot in here if I do that. Uh, either way, it's really nice though. Uh, but yeah, the main difference with this one is obviously the pasta and with the um, the beefy flavour. But I'm going to crack on eating it now. Okay, so we're back in the UK now. We're back from Bologna. Uh, we're going to make our traditional bolognese, our ragu. We're going to tweak a couple of the ingredients as well just to make them a little bit more accessible for you and I. Uh, so what we're going to be using is some onions. We've got some carrots. We've got some celery. Some tomato paste. Uh, we have passata, which is just sieved tomatoes. Uh, we've got white wine, not red, but I'll explain why that is in a little bit. And we've got some ground beef and some chopped bacon. Now, traditionally, you're meant to be using uh, pork, veal, and pancetta, but they're sort of a little bit more expensive and a little bit harder to come by, uh, so it's perfectly acceptable to be using beef and uh, chopped bacon instead. So the first thing that we need to get going with is making our sofrito. Uh, if you remember to earlier, a sofrito is just simply those carrots, onion and celery. That's all that is. So uh, yeah, we're going to start chopping those up now. Right, so it's just going to be a fine dice on each of these guys. So just do something that we call top and tailing, which is quite simply taking the top off, taking the bottom off. In half. Then down. We're going to want quite a fine dice on this as well. If you um, if you don't have great knife skills, then it's absolutely fine. If you just want to go ahead and grab your food processor, and you can just blitz it through that. Just put it in there and just uh, press pulse a few times, and it'll do exactly the same job pretty much. I just like playing with my knife. Okay, next up, celery. Exactly the same thing. You just want to go for fine even dice, like I said before as well. If you aren't too confident with a knife, it's absolutely fine. Just use a food processor. It's all good. Okay, so onion, just take the top off, cut them down half. Just going to get rid of this outer layer here. It's not too good, no one likes eating paper. Make a few slices going down here. And then we go across the middle like this. Be careful of your fingers, and then down like that. We get a nice fine dice out of it. Right, let's get yourself a pan or a pot. Anything that you've got kicking about at home will do fine. We're gonna put the meat in first, so that's the beef and that's the pork. We're not gonna put any oil in the pan. Uh, reason being is that this is gonna render out some nice fats and fluids anyway, so we can use that. We don't wanna make this thing too greasy. We're gonna put this on for about five minutes or so on a medium heat. And you just wanna sort of break it up a bit as well. You don't want to have massive huge chunks of meat in this as well because remember we've got quite a fine dice on all of our veg 
So you sort of want all of this to be about the same size. So just kind of break it up for a little bit. And then just sort of let it do its thing for a couple of minutes. Okay, so you can see here, all of this fat that's, uh, that's uh, come out of this meat. And this is the reason why I didn't want to add any oil to the pan, first of all. Uh, because when you're cooking something for a long time and you reduce uh, reduce liquids down uh, Certain liquids will reduce but fat doesn't actually reduce at all. So once we start adding loads in you're not going to be able to get rid of it So this is the reason why we didn't add any to that pan because like I said, we don't want we don't want the dish to be really really greasy uh, This has been going on now for about three to four minutes It's looking all good. You can see all of these juices that we've got going on here. So now's going to be a good time for us to uh, start adding our, uh, our sofrito, our onions, our carrots and our celery. We're just going to pop this straight into the pan. Just make sure you get it all out. Pay for the ingredients, so use them all. Cool. So at this point, I want to reduce the heat down a little bit as well. So from here on out, we're going to be using a really low heat because the idea is that we don't want to actually caramelize any of these, uh, any of these veg. We just want to uh, sweat them down. Uh, we don't really want to, them to gain like a brown color on, on them or anything. So you can see that all of that excess fat that we had in there has now kind of all been soaked up and that's what uh, is going to help these uh, these vegetables uh, cook in here so it's looking all good we've got both the meat and the veg all at about the same size all about the same size dice which like I said earlier is exactly what we're looking for uh, so we're just going to leave that as it is now on a super low heat and I just want to cover it and we're going to leave that covered now probably for about 15, 20 minutes or so. We're gonna stir it occasionally just to make sure that nothing is sticking at the bottom there. Uh, if it really does need it, then we can add a little tiny bit of olive oil to that as well. But we'll see how it goes. Kind of judge it by your eye as you're going past it. So yeah, we're just gonna leave this for a while. Right, so let's have a look at this now. Cool, so now it's time to add the white wine. jiggle around so the reason why we're adding the white wine to it and not red wine which you would sort of like naturally gravitate towards red wine seems to have a little bit more of, of a heavier flavor to it it's almost going to overpower this dish and that's not what we're looking for here we're looking for a, a sort of balance across the board um, so what we're going to do now is just leave this for a few minutes just sort of let the flavors mingle and just have the, give them a chance to chat to each other, get to know each other. And then the next thing that's going to go in is uh, the posada, which, like we said beforehand, it's just simply sieve tomatoes. That's all it is. They don't use uh, fresh tomatoes either, which is kind of what you would think that they would be using, but it doesn't, it just, it doesn't give it enough intensity of flavor. So this is why uh, they, they ended up just using sieve tomatoes for it. Just having a look at this now. As you can see as well, everything's kind of cooked down now. Everything started to soften. And it's pretty much about time that we can um, that we can add the posada in. So you don't want too much, as well. That doesn't look like a lot. It feels like it might be quite dry, but believe me, it's not going to be dry. It'll be okay. Because again, like I said, we're looking for a balance of flavors as well. We're not looking for just a tomato dish. We're not looking for just a meat dish or anything like that. It needs to be completely balanced. And that really is the key with this. Right, so at this stage, so at this stage here, all we need to do, we've got him on a super low heat. We're gonna cover him. 
we're going to leave this guy for about probably now for about 45 minutes to an hour and we're going to stir it occasionally just to make sure that nothing's sticky or anything like that in there and uh, then we'll play with the next part Okay, so we've been away for about an hour or so. We've spent our time very wisely. Uh, as you can see, uh, a lot of the liquid has evaporated out of this dish now, which is good. That's exactly what we're looking for. But we're now going to add some tomato paste to it. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move all of the meat to the side before we add it. Uh, reason being, is that tomato paste um, has quite a bit of flavor to it initially. And you only want about a tablespoon's worth. <clears throat> and you're just gonna cook it out for a little bit. So if we pop it on here, just move it about. What you can do is just move the pan to the side, turn the heat up a little bit. So like I said, we can just cook this out, get rid of some of that bitterness to it. And by adding uh, by adding this tomato paste, what it's gonna do is uh, give it a, a bit of a, a deeper, uh, deeper red color to it. It's also gonna add a little bit more complexity to the dish as well. So you can see how when I first put it into the pan, it was quite solid, it was, it was quite firm and then literally just by putting it onto this heat just for a few seconds it's going to really soften up like this you can get away with now with just mixing this all up we're going to turn the heat down a touch as well it's one of the key things when you're making this reggae when you're making this bolognese is you never really want high heat for a long time at all. This is uh, it's one of those dishes that just needs to be cooked very, very, very slowly over a lot of time. So you, you really need to take your time with this dish. So we've now got it. So we've had it on the uh, we've had it on the heat for probably about an hour and a half now in total, which is all good. So we're going to leave it again. Now we're going to leave it uncovered this time. For, probably for about another 10 15 minutes or so uh, and then we'll go to the next stage right so I need to season this dish now when I say season I mean add salt and pepper uh, reason we haven't done it up until now is because there's pork already in the dish and pork is naturally salty so I didn't want to add any kind of extra salt to this until we were nearly at the finished stage so First of all, let's give it a shot, see where it is. So, a little bit of salt. Like I said, there's already bacon in there. So it's already got a little bit of natural salt going on. So you need too much. And then some cracked black pepper as well. Touch more salt. Right, so we're looking like we're in a good place now. 
Uh, we've got one more step to go. Uh, last step is that we're going to add uh, we're going to add milk. The reason that we're adding the milk is it's going to um, it's going to kind of like uh, neutralise some of the acidity in the dish as well. So we've got uh, tomatoes, which is quite high in acid, going on in there. So we we'll add a little bit of this, and it's not an exact amount. It's kind of more. It's kind of more how how much you feel that needs to go in there, and you'll you'll get an idea of that whilst you're making it. And don't be afraid about the fact that it is going to go a much much more pale colour. That's absolutely fine. As it sits right now, the colour that it's on, the consistency that it's on, this is all good. This is exactly how it should be. So whilst I've had this. Uh, whilst I've had this blipping away, I've got a pan of water on, and that's going to be for our tagliatelle, which is going to go with it. Well, the reason we're using tagliatelle instead of spaghetti is because the uh, the tagliatelle has uh, lots of tiny little indentations going on in there, and those little tiny indentations, what they're going to do is hold the sauce a hell of a lot better than if you're going to use spaghetti, because it's uh, spaghetti is quite smooth. So whilst you're eating it, the sauce kind of slip off. Um, and uh, also, if you use um, if you use spaghetti in Italy, uh, that'll kill you. It's that simple. So I'm going to get my uh, tagliatelle on. I'm going to leave this to blip away for about 10 minutes or so. By the time this is all good, the tagliatelle be done, and then be ready to serve up. So we're ready. We're at about the right consistency now. We've got the tagliatelle. It's all cooked. Everything's all good there. What we're going to do is we're going to put this into here. Now I've taken this tagliatelle off about two to three minutes before it's actually ready. Uh, the reason is is that we're looking for a texture from this pasta called al dente, and that means uh, like tender to the bite. So when we bite into that pasta, we don't want it to be soft. We don't want it to be squidgy. Uh, we want it to just have that little tiny bit of texture as we bite into it. So by the time that I put this into here and we run it through it, it's going to be cooked and all good. So this dish here is going to serve about, it's probably going to serve either two very, very hungry people, three people with above average appetites, or it's going to be for four normal people. So if you're looking to feed a family, this will be absolutely fantastic. This will, this, this will do the job. When we, uh, when we cooked the pasta, we also reserved some of the starchy water that was from that. With that, what we can do is, because as you can see, this is kind of looking a little tiny bit dry right now. So this starchy water, we're gonna get a little bit of that kicking around in there. Move it around. You can just see how that's all sort of brought it together and kind of emulsified. Made it all beautiful. So this right now, it's exactly where we want it to be. All of our hard work, this is it right now. This is the payoff. So we get ourselves a bowl. Set of tongs. And you get straight in. So you can see how there's a nice ratio of pasta to uh, to sauce here. You don't want too much pasta. You don't want too much sauce. It's just looking nice. So this is pretty good for one person. It's completely up to you. Me personally, I like a bit of parmesan on mine. Do not go out and buy that dodgy grated stuff. That is not the way forward at all. It has a completely different flavor. It's not good. It tastes like sweaty feet cheese. You want a nice small piece of Parmesan. I'm lucky in the way that, I, like we all know, I just got back from Bologna, so obviously I bought a block of cheese back with me. But it's really easy and it's really available to get a block of Parmesan from anywhere. So we're just gonna grate a little bit on top. 
like this. And again, you don't want too much because we're not looking to overpower everything. We're just looking for the Parmesan to kind of complement it. And uh, Parmesan is really high in umami, so it means that, that, that means it's kind of just gonna boost the meaty flavor of things. So, after several hours, after all of our hard work, this is our final dish here. This is exactly what it looks like. It should be around this consistency. This is it. It's definitely time for a taste after all of this. Mm -hmm. Exactly what we were talking about in the um, earlier, where it doesn't just taste of pasta, doesn't just taste of sauce, doesn't just taste of tomato. It's got that whole slow cooked amalgamation of all of those flavors. You can quite easily see that it's coated all of that pasta with all of those oils. It's gorgeous. It's, it's, it's a thing of beauty. And uh, sitting down at a table with a family, a bottle of wine on a Sunday, on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It doesn't really matter. It's a beautiful dish. Bolognese, ragu. <clears throat> yep. Yep. That's what I wanted.